all... Would you would you mind, uh, boys? And your name is <laughs> Earl. <laughs> Earl. And you, and you are. Yeah, Jim. Uh, yeah, Jim something. Uh, would you mind uh, just telling uh, the homeschoolers what it takes to uh, become a studio man? They ra they're asking me all these questions. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. What's what does it take, and uh, is it too late to be a studio man? That's a, that's a too to late me. for who? Like for a young fella, yeah. for all of us, really. You know. I think oh, uh, it's easy yeah. for old fellas to think yeah. that it's too late, maybe for a young fella, because I would not want to do it again. Right. But I, I, you still see younger people coming up. That people figure out a way. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm walking into sessions and I'm seeing new guys all the time. <laughs> yeah. I like the old guy. Right. You know, so evidently it still thrives, you know. Well, it's dude, still, it's still I mean. still there, but maybe not as how, as it used to be. Right. Okay. Yeah. How old were you when you first broke into the session scene? Uh, three. Uh, no. Three and a half? <laughs> yeah, three and a half, three and four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I booked my session first, uh, it was probably about. Oh, he was a toddler on a telly. Do you remember uh, the first time you ever played with him on a session? Oh, yeah. I'm always like loose on the timeline. Yeah. I never I always say something different every time somebody interviews me. Yeah. I was probably 27 or yeah. 20, you know, 26. Were you nervous when you got on your first sessions? Oh, I, was, I couldn't even eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was sitting around looking at guys like David Hungate, and right. Larry, Larry London, right. and, you know, right. uh, all these cats that I saw on the back of records, the credits, you know, yeah. and I was like, I better I better play my ass off right now, or I'm gonna probably be shipping out of town fast, you know. So well, I dude, felt like every this is my chance. If I screw up, it's over. Totally. Which is just a lot of pressure I was putting on myself. It was you know that was it was me. It was, right. You know. You wouldn't remember this, Brent, but myself. but you, I remember clearly the first time I got thrown on a session with you. Talk that feeling you were just talking about. <laughs> I was scared to death. You would never remember it. I got hired by John Guess to play acoustic. Yeah. And it was the, I had, I barely could read a chart or play an acoustic. And I got thrown in this session with you, Matt, uh, Worf, Franklin, Paul Franklin, and Eddie Bears. Right. And I was on acoustic and nobody knew who I was. And I, and you guys were all talking that secret language that y'all talk and I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, where you, did you, so, it was a number chart, right? Number chart. You but know, do, do you, I'm going to throw the number chart history? Yeah, I, I've just recently learned it. Yeah. That, on my first session, I was with David Briggs and Charlie McCoy. I go back a few generations. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I was just learning the number system, you know, and I was sweating blood. You know oh, that whole thing, dude. how you make a guitar player turn down, yeah, right? Yeah, put a charge for him. That, yeah. that was the situation for yeah. me. And so, <laughs> and Briggs was going, come on, come on. And Charlie McCoy was actually, actually was, did a good thing for me, you know. I always thank him for it. He goes, he goes, hey, David, leave him alone. He's, he's getting it. He's yeah. getting it, man. You know, I said, thanks, Charlie. You know, because I yeah. thought I was slowing things down. But, uh, Do you happen to remember this artist, Billy Midnight? Does that name <laughs> sound familiar? Isn't that a great name for your first session? <laughs> Billy Midnight. That was the guy that we did that session for. Billy, does that sound familiar at all? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Billy. <laughs> Maybe your career is happening now, or you're retired. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. To that. Right. So, Do you remember your first time playing with Brent? Well, I remember the first times you were on some of those Skag shows, the live things that, that we were doing. At the Ryman. We cut a Skag's record. At the Ryman. At Woodland. Yeah. Well, you had to get your ass together if you're going yeah, on a Skag right. session. That's right, buddy. That's right. <laughs> you weren't a good picker, you know, like oh, it, just like. Brian well, there and and like Albert Lee was coming in the next day and I yeah. said, I'm here the first day and I thought think of the pressure of that you, oh, know, you gotta play your butt off I mean we're in a session right now we got Danny Dogmore over there and Larry Franklin and I was just thinking about a minute ago the collective hours of playing our instruments in this room and we still feel today. like we're not good enough sometimes right we're not, not capturing it That's right weird thing uh yeah. Maybe we're not. Well, you know, it's... Uh, to, <laughs> you say maybe we're not? <laughs> maybe we're not. Book, hey, you know, maybe we're not. <laughs> to the great book of that uh, statement of years ago, it's the service industry. Yes. You know, we yeah. fooled them for a while. We're not yeah, here to be yeah. impressed by our musicianship. That's so right. We're here to make dude sound... Yeah, sound make good. the artist. Earn, who yeah. we love. Who is smoking uh, weed in there in a contraption that I've never seen before. Yeah. 
I'm gonna paste it on the end of this video. I took a video of it yesterday. <laughs> the a the volcano. On this video. Yeah, I do a little editing. Yeah, I custom. Would, would you mind me geeking out for a second and showing the cats what you're playing through today? Would that be weird? I don't want to get weird. Would it be weird? Okay. <laughs> I'm not these sure. Yeah. I've been carrying these around. What can I do with these? Where did you get yeah, those? Car wash. Maybe I could use this one. No. Do, do you have the famous? Is the this the one? Schooler. Is this the famous guitar, the one you played yeah, all these famous. years? Yeah, oh, my God. Is, uh... Do you remember where you got this guitar? Yeah, it was at Hughley's Music in Nashville here. Hughley's but, Music. Which is, it was the one, uh, Tusculum, which is East Nashville. But yeah. It's not, it's no more. I went in there one time <laughs> before it closed. Yeah, and this was yeah. like 300 bucks or something. $300? On the wall. On the wall. On what the color wall. was it when you first got it? That <laughs> it was. It okay. was a primer coat gray. Yeah. Okay. And I mean now it's it looks like a '68. Even neck. worse looking, but I never, you know, of course, never had it fin refinished because right. it sounded so good. Damn so, right. You know, swamp ash. Yeah. And that looks uh, like about a '68 looks, neck, looks right? Horrible. But that's a '67. '67. 67, right. right. Right at the end of '67. Right. Right. Probably wasn't out in the store and, until '68. So you've. What year did you you reckon you bought that? Oh, it's probably 1983 or 83. something. Can you imagine the miles you got on that thing? <laughs> I mean, seriously, dude. Yeah, it's it's seen it. Uh, Have you? I'm I'm afraid to play it anymore. The you know since it's you know it's just a primer car paint yeah. coat on there, and that's yeah. all it's ever been. Yeah, it's like the wood's going away yeah, on amazing, it. You know, man. I'm saying, shit, I mean, shit, maybe I better not take that out of the house anymore. Is it lightweight? I never well, I mean, it's lightweight. I mean, it's got some, you know, a B bender in there, and it's got some. Yeah, it's, it's, got, it's got some weight. It's got some weight. Yeah, but it's so uh, fast. Did you ever? Um, did you ever like almost like lose that guitar or anything like that? Like, oh yeah, I've left you, it in the like, studio. You left a in the studio, you know, and really never thought. You know, we we have our guitars that we love their vintage yeah. and who knows the value of yeah. them and so when we a lot of times we'll walk, walk out of the studio and just leave them you know, yeah and totally I don't know if that's a smart that's idea it's probably not a great idea tell you the know. story about leaving your car running and your door open at the oh yeah well the american music music shop the american music okay. shop years ago yeah. was mark o'connor showing up me and <laughs> i, I already love a bunch of guys <laughs> and there was a studio in brentwood which is about you know 25 minutes away. okay uh, from downtown, at, yeah. we were at the Surratt Cinema in Vanderbilt okay. area, downtown Nashville, and <clears throat> I was going to do my first show there, and I, you know, I was kind of, I was kicking on sessions, kind of got the dig head a little bit, yeah. you know, like, I, I know this, we're going to start rehearsing for the show, for the, that, that uh, American Music Shop, at one o'clock, and the session go, that I was doing goes from 10 a.m. to okay. 1, 1 p.m., okay. so there's no time to get right. you know so but ah, i'll just get there 15 yeah. minutes late so when i got there i started unloading at, at the surratt cinema which is there's a back door there right. you come up the steps and and i had I opened up my back hatch of my truck yeah. you know and got my guitar started to carry i had a few more things and i started to carry them in and uh mark o'connor says get up come on man let's get going we're trying to we're, we're starting you know and everybody was hollering oh yeah 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 so I, I got up there, my amp was up there, and I plugged in, threw my little quick pedal board up there, started playing. About two hours later, somebody goes, there's somebody's car is running out here in the alley with the back hatch door up on it. I'm going, oh, sure, that's me. That's me. It was like, so I showed me, right? I showed me, and I thought I was going to be some kind of cool dude showing up late, but I, I got my butt, you know, kicked on that one. When you first came to Nashville, did you play through Twins? Did I play what? Twin Reverbs. Was that your main I, app? I played spe PV Specials. PV Specials. <laughs> no shit. And they sounded they sound great. Yeah. You know, those those amps, you could set them up there and then walk over here and they still sound good. Yeah, know? yeah. They're not and directional. People loved them. Yeah. Uh, and they sounded good for a guitar. I mean, some Someone of told me you played through a Steel twin. guitar players used them a lot, but they right. used those Nashville right. 400s. They were a little more mid-range right. sounded, but the, right. the Specials were 130, Special 130s. That's what they were. Special 130. And I used those. You still have one? No. Now you no. get rid of them all? I'm not somebody. What uh, is your equivalent, Brian, of that guitar? What guitar have you had? That, like that? If there's one guitar that's going to be identified with, it's got to be that bone, right? Well, I mean, I've never had one as long as Brent's had one. Yeah, um, me neither. But the 36, I've played a lot in the last five or six years. Yeah. I, played, I had a 48 double pit guard that Billy Strings owns now that I... 
because it has two pit guards. It was right. kind of like Iconic. people knew me. Coming. Yeah, right. But I've never, I never held on one long enough to. We were just talking in the lounge. We had a uh, beautiful conversation about have, has any of us ever walked out on a session? We won't get into any of that, but that was fun to talk about that. Uh, every session player has got those <laughs> right. stories, right? Oh, my God. You want to, yeah. You want to, yeah, uh, no kidding. Like I said, I never have been close. So. Yeah, been close. We're we're doing a really cool thing for uh, Joey Moy. We got this guy, Ern, who we love, right? Ernest, yeah. Ern's very cool. Yeah. And he does some he pop country stuff, and then he also does some traditional. Yeah. So we were just we just did a bluegrass tune. We're trad which was which is really fun. Uh, anything you want to tell the homeschoolers before we sign off? Oh, anything? <laughs> you brought up nothing for your great your great TV your YouTube show. What was your first point? I told you my well, story. I was just saying, over, what's it? What's I'm so sick of my story. Yeah, <laughs> I need no, a new well, story. you've done a lot of interviews. I'm working on a new story yeah, somewhere yeah. where I can start telling it. You know, I get a lot of questions about the young guys. Should I, first of all, should I move to Nashville? That's number one. And I always say, yeah, because yeah. you can't get anything going in well, yeah, Des Moines. Can, yeah, there's no overnight success. There's no, yeah. So, uh, but know. is there any room left? I'm just saying question. if they're young and they're married, they got kids. Right. Then maybe not move. Right. You know, think that out a little bit. Right. You know, family first. But if you're single That's right. and you're young and That's right. you want experience and, you know, come on. Yeah, I feel like the way I did it is the if to, for me to give advice to anyone is so antiquated now. Mm -hmm. None of the shit that I went yeah. through even applies anymore. It's just yeah. cliche. It's so. a, it's so yeah. I used to go see bands play, and I would ask the guys at the end, "Hey, does anybody know about any auditions?" <clears throat> that shit wouldn't even you couldn't even do that anymore, could you? I don't think but, you know, and I don't know if I'm uh, I can answer those questions anymore because yeah. I'm kind of like well, right. I do this stuff and I do the certain things I do and then I go home. Right. You know, I don't right. really. Go right. out and hang as much in, with the crowd. Right. Not that I'm above it. I've just been you there. See, yeah, you know? totally. Do you get that question a lot on your channel? People talking about how do they get started and all that shit. Well, you know, we don't get into that so much, but it comes up, and yeah. uh, you know, the, the differences are just less, uh, less labels, less artists overall. That's right. No, like full band demos. Like they used to, That's so right. it's just I'm saying the pool is a little smaller, but it's still there, yeah. and you still see people like Saul and Sam Hunter, and you know yeah. they're like people that I think of as like kind of on their way up right. through the ranks, and not, you know they're working on anything right. that we might show up on, and um, as opposed to Tom Bukovac, who's on his way down. Oh, say. Oh, <laughs> Are you talking about Saul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saul. He, well, Saul. you found him, right? Saul was yeah. You discovered him. Yeah, he was, yeah. He was, he was such a great player. He would do telly stuff, just smoke and yeah. play Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff, you know. And there's so many of those type. But he was, he had the right stuff yeah. on it, you know. Yeah. And uh, he, he was, he knew so much. He, he was great and, and fit in really fast because he knew a lot of, he was a great engineer. He was very technical, right. you know, and he knew uh, Pro Tool system. He was at my house and he was running my whole Pro Tool system down there. And yeah. I was, you know, I hear him down there working and, and stuff. And I was eating a bowl of, you know, Cheerios <laughs> or something. Hey, turn it down, uh, Saul, a little bit. But but he was, he was great, you know. Yeah. So he got real. And then he would do my overdubs. Yeah. So he got the studio, you know, he, he got taught. Yeah, yeah. By just, you know, do, being there and, totally. and, and recording my stuff, being oh, an engineer. You look like an apprentice, right? Like a bit of an apprentice, yeah. All right, I also, right. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, I do this little segment called, Hey Man, Show Me a Cool Lick. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, oh, let me show you a cool lick. You got one, Brian? Brian's cowboy. Let's go learn one from Brian. Come yeah, on, let's Brian. do that. Let's go do that. I need to know one. Let's get a let new me, lick. I'll, I'll let me, I'm coming out there. All right, you coming out here? Brent Mason. Right. Okay, show, what, us, show us a cool lick. Where do you want me? Where do you want the camera? What I've got is a, is a yeah, careful. Don't we'll trap me in putting in that Brent Mason lick. You remember doing this Okay, well, let's get some low Okay, good. You did this on a Skag song. Uh, okay. Uh, That's my Lincoln. He's going to have to show up back to me. <laughs> I kind of took over. Oh. But all that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's Love good. it. That's better than I'm And uh, you did that on oh, right. the Alan yeah. Jackson thing. Right. Dude. Oh, but that one. Do that one real yeah. slow. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking up 
Where'd that you come up with that shit? I'm not gonna get you fired. Where'd you, where'd you come up with that? You remember? I don't know. I, I... Well, what? do that where the open E string is ringing. Through. Yeah, that was. I came up with that on an Alan Jackson. Yeah. Uh, I'm in love with a waitress. Yeah. And I was just getting kind of bored with my licks. I, you know, myself I had this. I said I got to learn something new. So everybody was breaking for lunch, and I was sitting down. We were all I had that song started, yeah. recorded, you know, and uh, we'd stop in the middle of it to have lunch, like. Yeah. Uh, and then, so I, I stayed, I sat in the chair and kind of figured out, you know, putting the sort of the chicken picking thing, but keeping yeah. that open string involved in every note, you know? Killer. What about the riff from, uh, uh, well, I've been up all night wondering what to do, wondering if I ought to just think about you. It's a little too late. Yeah. It's a little too late to do the right thing now. Tanya Tucker, do you remember that? Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember that? <laughs> I remember Tanya Tucker. Yeah, do you, you came up with a badass riff on that tune. You don't remember that? No. Oh, dude, do you remember that lick? I I know, I've heard him do things like that. and I, and I, I do that lick all the time. I play one. <laughs> Tanya Tucker. <laughs> uh, That's one of those kind of... Uh, Faith let me Hill, see if I can remember. Uh, Hold the no. Here, let, let me see if I can remember. Leon Womack, uh, and I use it as could, much as I can. I got a lot of mileage out of it. Let's see if this sounds familiar. Okay. It's a... Uh, oh, yeah. Here you go. Yeah. You remember that? Okay, okay I read this. I don't remember, I remember the song, it. though. Man. Uh, it's such a cool lick. Any home scorers out there that know how to play that right, please, please tell us. A little that too one, late. That one, that. It's, it's, it's uh, reminiscent of some other things yeah. I knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one keep going. Yeah, that <laughs> one. Uh... I, I use that on a, a slow version of it on one of the early Skaggs bluegrass things I did. Yeah. I played that on a Skaggs record? You played it on a Skaggs record, and I did Well, too. I know I played it on I just didn't, I don't remember that. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Brent. Well, you, I know I played it on the record. Really Life's Too Long, you. that song, uh, yeah. it's all you. My Father's Son yeah. album? That, if, that's a, one of those deep catalog Skaggs records that not a lot of people have. It was toward the end of his main country career. It's like yeah. one of the last records yeah. you cut for Atlantic. And it, you, you play so much amazing stuff on that record because that, oh, that's right. i was having to play electric i was playing telly with ricky at that time oh. so i learned every oh, bit of yeah. it it's just so i learned so much that just that, let that, me ask you this record. dude the jimmy page of country music you are coming up with all the best riffs uh did you did, is there was there ever a record that you played on where you felt like you played some shit that you really liked that no one ever heard yeah i mean there's certain songs uh i mean like, Can anything come to mind this one uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everyone one. knows that one. Yeah, everyone knows that. Nobody heard that one. Yeah, right. Anything? Well, I've played on like jazz, some jazz stuff, like Natalie Cole or something, and right. then some. You know, nobody would have heard it. Right. Heard it unless they dug in the middle of the record. But that's where your heart's at, right? You're kind of like jazz, jazz. Well, no, I yeah, I love I love, you love jazz, jazz, but I yeah. mean, uh, um, I never really, you know, played it every, out every night. Right. Like, hey, he's a jazz or every night, but I wanted to be so. Right. But I feel pretty good if I kind of go over some standards and right. stuff. I, I that's what if, if somebody was asking me, what do you practice? Only practice I play jazz standards, sure. even though I might not be playing it on the gig that's right. coming up. It just keeps right. my brain totally. going to chops. Well, Did you yeah. get to meet Lenny, bro? Oh yeah. Lenny? yeah, 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 yeah. Play so with him much? Yeah, wow. a little bit. Yeah, it, amazing. I mean, of course. Your cats, your dude, your no, dude. Lenny, bro. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. God. Yeah, he came out to see me uh, when I first went and started playing at the Stagecoach. Mm -hmm. He came in and I knew who he was, and he sat right in front of me and, was, and smiled on you know. Yeah. And uh, when no I pressure. shook his hand, it was like come up, shake my head. It, it, it was like you were huh? like that, and I went, oh, mm -hmm. you didn't want me to crush yes. his hand, you know? Sure. Crazy man. So he was real sensitive about that. I mean, what you? I mean, he had a real sensitive touch too totally. it's like if, you put, if he had to play in some in a cold room it kind of would you know mess yeah. things up you know how us you know i'm the same way in, in a way because my fingers are you know moving i'm using a finger style most right. of the time right if a pick does it you feel that cold weather messes you up you uh, still got the it's <laughs> a little more yeah. here he's, you, and you do oh, too dude, you got that yeah. nice you got you guys got good technique for the straight yeah, pick i don't know uh, 
I was going to ask you about the stagecoach. I, I, re- I heard a lot of people talking about you. You were like the house band there, right? Mm-hmm. What year was that, roughly? Uh, was it, uh, the year it started about 19 in the summer of 82. 82. Yeah. And you were what, 22, probably? Yeah, 22. 21 or 22. Man, I mean, who was all in that band? Uh, there was a drummer, Paul Cook, who played okay. with Jerry Reed. Right. He was on the Half and Half Jerry Reed album. Real funky, right. great player. Uh, Don Kelly was playing bass at the, and singing at the time. Oh, shit. It was like, uh, and the piano player was uh, David Bird, who was married to Opry star Mary Lou Turner. And David was mm-hmm. kind of a session player that did sessions. I think he played with Bill Anderson, you know, the country star okay. Bill Anderson. Who else was on? That, that was it. That was yeah. the band. And you were doing covers and just making up shit? Yeah, we do. Don would play a lot of Texas music. He'd do some Delbert McClinton right. and do some real standard, you know, country songs right. too as well. Were Haggard. And, what's that? Were you singing some of that stuff? I was singing some of it, yeah. yeah. Great singer too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you remember you. that? We went to the Faroe Islands. I remember, uh, mm-hmm. one thing I'll never forget about it is jamming uh, we, on stage. We did just the two of us. Oh, uh, yeah. And Hungate and... and Paul Lyme and, and Hobbs and yes, that, dude. that was so fun. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was that was fun. High gate was fun. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So there's really no album that jumps to mind that somebody sh- should go listen to that that no one's ever heard. No, I mean, I I can't. I, I, yeah. Just some. I don't know. It's just old age. <laughs> no, I guess you. I, I guess can't. You. I can't. Nothing just pops yeah. out to me right you now. You know, I, mean, any... I did. You know, David Gates uh, with with Bread when he right. came to the record in right. Nashville. Uh, yeah, there was a song called The Avenue of Love. I played some, it was sort of like a blues, jazz kind of a thing. Okay. And I liked what I played in that. Okay. I thought it was kind of, you know, cool. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> but I mean, that's, well, you know. That'll be a, something to look up I mean, for, there's right? a lot of stuff that I did. Yeah. that are, You know, there's so many good things, a lot of things that are stuck on in the middle of albums. Right. That that right. you just forget about right. because they're so lost in obscurity. Right. Right. You know, there's another Brent Mason subtle thing, not yeah. like a big flashy this thing. This is a tribute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's another one that, on the, that, that, that on the, chord, right? on yeah, the second the, sketch. The, drop the one I got to play with you. But <laughs> how you na- managed in some of that, you know, tele tele country thing, you slid okay. into it because I used to have to do this okay. with that E string open again. The E string open. It, that was the opening. Was that kind was of a mistake, Brian? Probably was a mistake. <laughs> it, was just, it got kind of normal after that. Those kind of standard things. But, uh, it was that. Open. You know, it's something. But you know, which brings up and some, a lot of times it's it's like mistakes that you yeah, like. You know, you right. listen to some Beatle yeah. records. Somebody's yeah. playing the wrong chord yeah. with with John or something. Totally. You know, and then it, then it's like that's what makes it cool. When you learn it, you got to you got to learn it like that, or right. it's not right, right? Right? It wasn't perfect. Right. So. Here's another. I know you. I know what you're gonna say. I don't know if that could have been on purpose, but it sounds like a mistake to me. Did you get Brett? I know you got. You have zero ego, and you're super, super, super humble. But be honest. Was there a time (laughs) when you got tired of hearing people imitate you? Did you ever go? Yeah, because sometimes when somebody imitated me, like on what, like if we were cutting a record, yeah. and they played a demo that I that I didn't play on, but they were playing like me on right. the demo. He said, "We love that solo." Sometimes it's harder for me to play something that somebody is copying me, right. so it's like the reverse thing. Right, and that's, right. it's sometimes it's harder because somebody's got a little different twist on yeah. it or something. And they wanted you to play an imitation of your solo <laughs> that you couldn't imi- play. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's crazy, man. So that was like there was a, when I first moved here. Yeah, man, it kind of it kind of wore, wore it out yeah, a little bit. Yeah, everybody you know, was trying to do. I mean, it's uh, yeah, that's for sure. flattery, like yeah, to totally. say. But still, it totally. kind of like it's like made me want to try to play something right, else. Right. You know, what about you? An album that you really were proud of? Some of the shit you played that no one's ever heard. Uh, there's you know within the acoustic realm, there's a few of these things, and uh, there's a few records. There was um. um that I've done with uh, Fred, Fred Mullen. Yeah. Uh, Kristen Chenoweth record and a Johnny Mathers record we yeah. cut here where there's just some nice stuff. And we did, did that. Did you cut that here? I've yeah. done a couple of those. Yeah, and that, uh, you did the Jimmy Webb stuff at Sound Emporium. Oh, yeah. Like stuff like that that got real oh, deep music. Jimmy Webb is just the best. And also the best. cut here was a Michael Feinstein bunch of tracks that we did with Kyle Lenning a few years ago. Um, that was really good. Yeah. If you think, though, I mean, 
again, not to throw all the love to you, but I haven't seen you in a long time. If there was a, if you turned on the radio, a country yeah. station, for you know a decade, yeah, and there were like defining features that said this is what country music is. It was that. Of course. Hands. Absolutely. It's amazing. And that guitar. And that guitar. Yeah. Uh, how much you got Put it right there, there in the hole. How much is that? <laughs> All right, real He's quick, going, Brent, show us what you're using over here. I know you don't care about oh, gear. Oh, come on, man. I know you don't care. I know you don't care. Aren't we all sick of that? I know, but is this, this, this the same shit? This is something. This is all. This is nothing high tech. It's this is all the same shit you've been together. using, right? Well, I, I set it up because I, I could, you know, I did have a, a Bradshaw Looper at one time, right, and then I sold right. that to Clint Black right. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> Let he him wanted your whole rig. With it, not he me. just said, "Yeah, yeah, but, take uh, the whole rig." Oh, that's just something. When I was playing, you know, my gig, uh, I just like things kind of like you. You kind of inspired me with with a setup of just throwing shit on yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Nothing, nothing yeah. symmetric no at loopers, all, or yeah. symmetry, no symmetry yeah, at all. Exactly. Because I remember working with you, you had your, this, oh, yeah. this pedal was cramped <laughs> like this, and there's a, you know, a rat pedal that was over here. Yeah, I thought, exactly. how do you even get your foot yeah, over there? No, it. A, and no loopers. <laughs> I never use loopers. I think it's totally unnecessary. I mean, if you. Yeah, no, I, I just, yeah. well, the thing was, like I had that Bradshaw, yeah. it was a great system, and yeah. it was really cool, but if something went wrong, I didn't know how to fix right. it. Right. Exactly. It's like this... I had to undo all the snakes totally. and, the, and, the, and the, you know, the ties and stuff. And go, that, yeah, that's yeah. the cord. And now, exactly. I, now I just like to see where, sh exactly how shit all hooks up, you know. Last uh, question, I'll leave you alone, all okay. right? Because this okay. has been a fun interview. Thank you guys for talking to me on yeah. our lunch break. This is a good day. It's a good yeah. day. Um, Thanks for talking to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> too, uh, I've, always, I've asked a lot of legendary guitar players, the what is the one pedal that comes to mind when you think the coolest guitar pedal ever made? Uh, any of any effect, just the best pedal of all time. Okay, I, I hate to say this. It would be my pedal, the hot one. Yes, huh? this is it. This there is it. This is, is the orange. chance. Signature. Okay, that, that right there, that that uh, the this the first channel. Tell us about Rocks. that. What does it do? It makes a distortion sound. <laughs> Intentional, <laughs> and it is used on this. It's an, it's an intentional it's style of music called yeah, rock you and roll. That. You so you I'm you're not just endorsing this. You really love and use this pedal. Yeah, you, it's it's there. It's your thing, and I use yeah, it. It's see how close thing. it is to where I That's can get right, to it. That's so. right. Right where the money. On yeah, the pedal but there's works. like I like this dude too. That's pretty. What's good. the dude? dude do? You know, What's the J Rocket. Uh, yeah. What's that, the dude? That, is that another that's, distortion? That's kind of a dumbbell thing. It I works really you. good. Right. It's it's pretty versatile. I, I do. I'll, I mean, I don't know what the best pedal in the world is. You, right. I, you. Uh, I've asked a lot of different guys. A lot of people say like uh, Memory Man, but yeah, Buddy, I Buddy love, Miller. I love, I've always had this Memory. Yeah, man. they love Memory Man. Do people, you use Buddy, that one or use I the them. original? I, well, I, I mean, if I could keep an old Memory Man running, I would use it. Yeah, that's that's the, the thing. But with they're me great. Too. So, uh, they're the same as me. Yeah. But this thing, I love how this game works on it. Yeah, dude, that's a good pedal. It's almost like an amp. I mean, it's, it yes. works. At, uh, Buddy it's Miller said the Boss VB2, Brian. You know the vibrato? That was mm -hmm. his choice. A lot of people say like a rat pedal or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the rat pedal. That's a great pedal. Good, but, uh, um, I remember. And what, you know, you know what? This is weird. I've seen people use them so much, and it's not. It's nothing. But it's that equalizer there. That, well, that dude, G seven, crazy G seven, dude. I always put it on a board, I and know. I never really thought about it. But ever since I started using stomp boxes, yep. I've always had that in there. And yep. It just does some kind. Of, you know, it's an old, yeah. antiquated pedal, dude. I remember when but I it's first. It's like I really need. I feel like I got to get one of those on there, so oh, I'm looking dude. for one. I, I mean, talked about this on my channel. Uh, when I first moved to Nashville, I, I had one guitar, one amp, and I went to SIR one day, and your rig was, for some reason, mm -hmm. at SIR. You know, I don't know if you were... It wasn't yeah. like it was set up in... It was actually in the front lounge. Okay. But the board was sitting out. Right. And I remember looking at your pedal board, and I saw that Boss EQ on there, and I thought, what in the hell? Why would a guitar player ever want an EQ pedal on their board? But I've seen a lot of the guitar players use Yeah, them. well, I yeah. don't know if it was because of me. Yeah. I don't want to take you were the first guy I ever seen do that. And uh, It's so guitar friendly, I think. It it's is. It's not complicated. Oh, man. I mean, I, years right. ago, I started using it and fun. fell in love with it because you can do so much with it. It's yeah. really great. I mean, they still make, I'm, I'm saying it's antiquated, but no, they still make They still them. make those, yeah. They still, they still them. make them, man. But you were the first guy I ever seen have one of those, man. <laughs> yeah. For sure. All right. Well, I've, I've troubled you guys enough, I feel like. Your interrogation is finished now. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. It's, it's great to have did you. Did we answer the questions all right? You did beautifully. Did uh, I feel like we got in some pretty deep shit here, yeah. and I appreciate that. All right, boys. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye.